ESPNU College Football Primetime, presented by Five Hour Energy. Tonight in Baton Rouge, this LSU crowd is already at a fever pitch following last week's win in the game of the century. He throws and it is intercepted. The big break that LSU needed. Has a man wide open and it is picked off at the goal line. The cave on the way short and wide left. Snap, place, kick in the air. LSU wins. The LSU Fighting Tigers prove that they are the number one team in the nation. For just the second night game of the year here in Death Valley, moments ago, the number one and still undefeated LSU Tigers took the field. A grateful crowd on hand here in Baton Rouge to watch the 9-0 Tigers take on Western Kentucky. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. Hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Brian Greasy, I'm Clay Matfick. Last week in Tuscaloosa, the LSU Tigers win the quote-unquote game of the century 9-6 over Alabama, and they've got the inside track to the national title game. But the starting quarterback, Jared Lee, did not play well in that game, raising some questions at that spot. Yeah, it was certainly mission accomplished for LSU in Tuscaloosa, but for Jarrett Lee, it was a nightmare. And three of seven, two interceptions. Now, let's give a little bit of credit. Alabama will make a lot of, of quarterbacks look bad, but now the number one team in the country has a decision to make at the quarterback spot. Is it going to be Jarrett Lee, or is it going to be Jordan Jefferson? For Jordan Jefferson, an opportunity maybe to take the starting job. LSU head coach Les Miles is with Allison Williams. Thank you very much, Coach Miles. How do you plan to utilize your two quarterbacks tonight? Well, I, I think you'll see that uh, we'll use both of them. I, I think we may start with nine and, and, go, and go there for some indefinite period of time and, and then bring 12 to the field. Why the decision to start Jefferson? It just kind of felt like it, uh, kind of how we ended last game. Not, not that we're making any permanent decision at this point. It's just we'll start with nine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys. All right, Allison, thank you very much. So there you have it. Jordan Jefferson will be the starting quarterback tonight. Western Kentucky head coach Willie Taggart in his second season. He's a former Hilltoppers quarterback, was an assistant on the staff for seven years before heading to Stanford to join Jim Harbaugh's staff. We'll see a little of Stanford in this team's offense. We'll see a lot of it, and uh, Willie Taggart has this Western Kentucky team playing confident, having won five in a row. Now, certainly a tall task tonight in Death Valley. Western Kentucky has won the toss. They defer, and LSU to receive in their purple jerseys for their second time this season. Odell Beckham Jr. on the return steps out near the 25-yard line. So on homecoming night, it'll be Jordan Jefferson, 20 and 7 as LSU starter in his career, but this is his first start of 2011. I don't think this is any surprise with the way that last week went. Jarrett Lee looked like he was shell-shocked in a lot of cases. Jordan Jefferson came in, calmed the ship, did just enough to get the win in Tuscaloosa. And do remember, Jordan Jefferson's played a lot of football for LSU. This is his 37th game. And Spencer Ware will be in the backfield to start behind Jefferson, who's under center. Rolling out, Jefferson wants to throw and has it complete out to the 36-yard line and Reuben Randall. So a good start for the six foot five 225 pound senior quarterback well, that's the thing Brian you know they say you know Jefferson is a better running quarterback but the coaches will tell you just the opposite he can throw a pretty good pass too yeah he certainly can throw the football I went to practice Thursday and he's got one of the strongest arms in college football and I think you, he hasn't been able to show this year he's only attempted about 20 passes on the year but tonight I expect them to air the ball out quite a bit Eight yard pickup on that play, so on second and two, it's Ware with his first run of the night. 
And it's a gain of one before the middle linebacker, Andrew Jackson, who leans the sun belt and tackles and tackles for loss, makes the stop. So third and short coming up for LSU. And I think this is a, a, a big game for the entire LSU offense. They struggled last week. It was uh, it was tough sledding against Alabama. They need some more confidence. They were scoring at 35 points a game before they played Alabama. They need to get that rhythm back tonight. Six touchdown favorites coming into this game against Western Kentucky. Quite a contrast from a week ago. On third and one, Jefferson handoff to where he's got the first down and more. Across midfield and finally dragged down by Ryan Beard. The strong safety at the 45 of Western Kentucky, a gain of 21. Uh, and this is the bread and butter for LSU. Just straight ahead blocking the fullback. Gets a block on the outside. Gonna be a lot of Spencer Ware tonight. It'll be difficult to bring him down. One of the main concerns Western Kentucky had was tackling the backs. Ware and Ford for LSU. First down and 10 for LSU on their opening series. Wanting to pass is Jefferson, and he is pounded by Jackson. A loss of eight on the play, and there is a penalty marker down. Mark Curls is our referee tonight. After the play, personal foul, number 53, offense. 15-yard penalty from the succeeding spot. The down counts. It's second down. Penalties on the right guard, T. Bob Abel. They'll go back and take a look. Look, watch the fullback here. He's going to block on the edge, and when he does, that's when Jackson comes on the blitz. It's a delayed reaction. He's reading that. Once he sees him blitz, no one to cover up Jordan Jefferson. So a 15-yard penalty on LSU. The ball all the way back to the 33 now. And it'll bring up second down and 32 for the Tigers. We saw a bear He's nursing a sore knee tonight. Where? And some more running room. He gets it to the 40 before he's pulled out of bounds by Darius Brooks, the cornerback. It's a gain of seven. Where one half of that terrific sophomore backfield combo. We're going to see a lot of Michael Ford tonight, too, Brian. Well, Michael Ford, a lot of people think he's just the speed on the outside, and where is the sledgehammer on the inside? But contrary, last week we saw both of these guys run in between the tackles and watching Michael Ford in practice. Now he's got a lot of weight to him, 215 pounds, but he also has that speed. Russell Shepard is in the backfield now. And he gets it on the jet sweep. Russell Shepard cuts the corner, gets a lot of yards back for LSU before he is angled out of bounds by Kareem Peterson. That's a gain of 17 for LSU. On third down and 24, they're just trying to get some kind of positive yardage, and they got a nice block on the outside from Clement, the tight end, sprung, sprung Russell Shepard, and now they're just come up short, force a punt. And Brad Wing, who was excellent last week. Remember that 73-yard punt in the game against Alabama? A lot of people very impressed with his game. One of four punts he put inside the 20 last week. That was one of the biggest plays of the game last really week. Was. Without question, uh, Marquise Mays with that sprained ankle wasn't able to get under that ball. A lot of people think it may have hit the cross wire with the camera. And uh, either way, that changed field position. That's penalties decline, still fourth down. Western Kentucky declines the delay of game penalty. Yeah, who would have thought uh, Brad Wing, a freshman from Australia, would have one of the bigger plays of the game. And special teams all around for LSU yeah. were fantastic. Of course, Alamo hitting the game-winning field goal. Antonio Andrews standing at the 10-yard line. Calls for the fair catch. And it's downed by Tyron Matthew at the 6-yard line. A 36-yard punt for Wing. LSU, the number one team in the country. Nobody questions that. Oklahoma State winning today. Boise State folks losing today to TCU. What does that mean? Wow, 36 to 35. That means it just clears up the picture. I mean, there was a lot of indecision of whether Boise State would be in the conversation with being undefeated, but now 
There's no question. The third best defense in the country in total defense is on the field for the first time. K1 Jakes hands off to Bobby Rainey, a very good running back for Western Kentucky. He'll pick up four on first down. There is Jakes, the junior quarterback out of St. Augustine, Florida. Third year starter. Came to Western Kentucky to run the spread, Brian, but now he runs the Stanford style West Coast offense. Yeah, and Willie Taggart brought that offense here. And, and K1 Jakes, it took him a, quite a while to adjust, but. In the last five games, he has played very well, very efficiently. That's why they're on a five-game winning streak. But this will be a tall task for K1 Jakes in the Valley. Rainey's the tailback. He is the bread and butter of this Hilltoppers offense. They fake the handoff to him. Jakes rolling out, throws it downfield, and it's complete to Jack Doyle, the tight end, the team's leading receiver, the top pass-catching tight end in the Sun Belt. Gain of 12 and a first down. That was a good sign for the Hilltoppers right there. K1 Jakes rolls out against the grain, has to get his hips back towards the line of scrimmage, and throws an accurate ball coming out of his own end zone. Uh, that was impressive. Jakes doesn't throw a lot. Obviously, not the team's strength, but they do pick up the first there. First and 10 at the 22 yard line. Opening series for the Hilltoppers. The fullback, Kadeem Jones. Not a lot of running room, and it's a gain of one. Let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Taco Bell. Well, we saw one carry by their uh, their all-star Bobby Rainey, but we're going to see quite a few more from him tonight. He's over 4,000 yards on his career. He's a, a great player for the Hilltoppers. This kid, Barkevius Mingo, keep an eye on him tonight. He's going to be a special player. Give him a couple more years, and I think he'll be a high draft pick. And Eric Reed had really the best game of any defensive player in the country a week ago tackling uh, Richardson in the open field and then that big interception on the goal line to help his team on second and nine Keyshawn Simpson will pick up a handful to bring up third down at about four Eric Reed last week fourth quarter interception the biggest play of the game but he was all over the field making tackles before that play on Mike Williams right at the goal line which in a lot of ways won that game for LSU yeah it might turn out to be the play of the year in college football if it continues and LSU continues to win but Eric Reed a lot of people talk about Morris Claiborne they talk about Tyran Matthew Eric Reed is one of the best safeties in college football that nobody knows reigning SEC defensive player of the week Third down and three, it's Doyle again, and he is going to be close to the first down. Indeed, I think he got it. Let's go to the studio for an update. Boise State's 65-game regular season home win streak comes to an end. A missed field goal at the horn, and TCU stuns the Broncos on the blue turf. Clay? All right, Anish, thank you very much. Yeah, we were just talking about that. The uh, Broncos go down to TCU. So another undefeated goes by the wayside. First and 10 for Western Kentucky on their opening possession. Jakes wants to throw, now finds a seam, steps up, and he's going to pick up just a yard. You know, I thought it was, Mingo makes the stop. Sorry, Clay. I thought it was interesting talking with head coach Willie Taggart uh, this week. He said the most important thing for us believe it or not get two first downs on every drive because they can't just go three and out and kick the ball back to LSU now they've got two first downs here on their initial drive uh, on the road against LSU so he's got to be happy last week this defense held Alabama to no touchdowns blocked a field goal had two interceptions plus a season low 295 total yards allowed Bobby Rainey a lot of room on the right side. Tyron Matthews stepping up. The Honey Badger making the tackle. It's a gain of three. Third down again coming up for Western Kentucky and fairly long. One of the impressive things about Tyron Matthew is his ability to play the run. You see he's got 47 tackles on the year. And then when he gets there and gets to the tackle, not only does he get you down, but he forces fumbles. Now four on the year. First in the SEC. He's got nine for his career. That's more than any LSU player in history. He's only a sophomore. There's a dark horse Heisman contender until a suspension for that Auburn game. Eighth play of the drive for Western Kentucky. 
Third down at six. Jakes. Cox's arm fires. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage incomplete. Michael Brockers got his hand up and knocked it down. And it'll be a punting situation for Western Kentucky. If Western Kentucky gets in third and six, third and seven, third and eight, they're going to struggle. It's hard blocking these SEC defensive tackles and defensive ends. They do a nice job there, but Brockers reads the quarterback's eyes, gets up six foot six. It's hard to throw over a guy like that. Guy's got a pretty good vertical for a man who gained 80 pounds in the last year and a half. Odell Beckham back to return the punt from Hendricks Brakefield. And LSU will start their next series at the 41 yard line, the number one team at home tonight on homecoming night. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by Five Hour Energy. The no wait, no hassle way to a great morning. Visit fivehourenergy.com. And in part by the new Capital One cash card for the people who want 50% more cash. The LSU Tigers number one in the BCS. They're 9-0, 6-0 in the SEC after that 9-6 win over number two Alabama a week ago. They've got the inside track to the BCS title game. But with essentially going three and out on their first series and Western Kentucky stringing a couple of first downs together, Hilltoppers off to a pretty good start here tonight in Death Valley. Michael Ford in the backfield for LSU. Jordan Jefferson getting the start for the first time this year. Away from center. Play action. Wants to throw. Caught. Ruben Randall. Touchdown. A 59-yard touchdown pass. Jefferson to Ruben Randall. is a defensive back's nightmare. He just ran right by him, and Jordan Jefferson hasn't thrown him many balls this year, but that one was right on the money. Drew Alamar with the extra point, and it's seven to nothing. You're six foot four, 208 pounds, and can run like this. It's going to be hard to cover. That ball right on the money, and LSU goes up seven. Big touchdown pass for Jordan Jefferson to Reuben Randall. 53 yards. And it's 7-0 Tigers. They have scored 31 straight quarters now here in Death Valley. And we were talking about it before, Brian. Yeah, Jefferson, he runs the option well, doesn't pass much. But again, the uh, He's got a big arm, and when he unleashes it, the defense well, is better look out. He hasn't, he hasn't thrown much this year, but in his career at LSU, he's thrown for over 4,200 yards, and that was his 31st touchdown pass of his career. So I think just this year, people have forgotten that Jordan Jefferson, oh, by the way, he can throw the football too. And Randall with his eighth touchdown catch of the year. James Harrison to kick it off for LSU. Darius Brooks. Decent return, just shy of the 35. He has been the home court of College Hoops. Action continues Sunday with a doubleheader from the Ticket City Classic. First to two Eastern. Cleveland State taking on the seventh-ranked Vanderbilt Commodores. Then number one, North Carolina, taking on UNC Asheville at 4 Eastern. That's on Sunday on ESPNU. How about that game on the aircraft carrier with North Carolina and Michigan State yesterday? That was pretty awesome. It really was. The only way you could tell that it was outside is when the, the camera angle could see the clouds. Other than that, <laughs> I mean, they did a great job setting that up. Western Kentucky back on offense. Bobby Rainey. Still trying to cut loose. Picks up three there. The nation's fourth leading rusher. 
Almost 1,200 yards on the season, nine touchdowns against the nation's number two run defense, though, tonight. It's going to be hard for Rainey to break into the open field a lot tonight. Yeah, and I, I thought it was uh, telling. We talked with defensive coordinator John Chavis for LSU. We asked him, is Bobby Rainey an SEC kind of back? Could he play in the SEC? And John Chavis said, without doubt, he could play in the SEC. Chief should know. He's uh, been around for 22 years as a coordinator in the SEC. K1 Jakes will pick up the first down. He's out across the midfield strike. Ryan Baker brings him down. It's a gain of 13 and a Western Kentucky first down. And K1 Jakes, he's going to have to do some of this, use his legs tonight if they're going to move the football. Nice job reading downfield. If it breaks and you see a seam, take it, get what you can get, and then please, by all means, get down because you only weigh 180 pounds, and some of these guys will take your head off in purple. So first and ten for Western Kentucky. First time ever taking out a number one ranked team. First time ever playing LSU. Simpson goes straight ahead and stop near the 45 yard line. A gain of four. Sam Montgomery, the defensive end, makes the stop. And we've talked about Montgomery with the coaches this week Brian what an amazing story he has been in that recovery from a knee injury a year ago and to be playing the way he has here in 2011 yeah, he certainly has he's got the speed and the size to come from the outside and rush the passer but he's got an uncanny strength about him too he plays so low to the ground and he plays with leverage he makes many plays in the backfield for LSU second and six three-step drop Jake's complete to Rainey. He's got the first down. And he's out of bounds at the 36. 11-yard pickup as Western Kentucky gets another opportunity to move the sticks. And that's what you talked about. They're just getting these uh, first downs together. I like the play call by offensive coordinator Zach Asani. Get Rainey out of the backfield where he has some space. He's a great receiver, runs good routes. A quick throw from K1 Jake, so you don't have to worry about the rush. Another first down. I like what the Zach Asani's doing on offense right now. That's a modest goal, just two first downs every series. So far, they're right on target. Simpson again in the backfield. Jakes to the end zone, incomplete intended for Mitchell Henry, the tight end. That just missed being a touchdown pass. That uh, was a great design. They faked the reverse. Here's Azani right here on the outside at the top of your screen. They fake the reverse, and Azani runs a wheel route, and he's three yards open, and that ball just one foot too far, and K1 Jakes knows that he had an opportunity. So many people coming in this game said there's no way Western Kentucky even gets in the red zone, much less scores a touchdown, and right there, they missed a golden opportunity. Bobby Rainey checks back in. The lone setback on second and ten. He'll take it. Gets to the outside. And then knocked out of bounds by Morris Claiborne. It'll bring up third down after the gain of six. That's a good run on second down right there. Gets six yards to get into a manageable third down situation. Bobby Rainey with the, the speed to get to the outside and then to get up and get six yards. If he can get four, five, six yards a clip tonight, they'll be doing uh, really well against this front four for LSU. Rainey had 155 yards last week against FIU. This crowd getting behind the defense here. And a timeout called by Willie Taggart. So Western Kentucky will talk some things over here. Here's Willie Taggart, a third and four decision coming up. Talking about a third and four at the 29 of LSU coming up. Yeah, go back and take a look at that uh, first down play. They got the tight end matched up on the linebacker, 23 Francois, exactly what they wanted. And this ball just, just out of reach of Mitchell Henry, but they've got a chance to atone here on a big third and four in the red zone. Rennie back in the backfield to the right of Jakes. Third and four pass complete to Mitchell Henry 
who came up short on that touchdown attempt moments ago picks up 10 and here is Western Kentucky in the red zone against LSU. Uh, that was a great route by Mitchell Henry he lined up in the wing. And this was a tight window for K1 Jakes. Take a look. A foot in front of the numbers on the slant route. Mitchell Henry runs a good route on the safety Taylor and a first down for Western Kentucky. Eighth play of the drive coming up for the Hilltoppers. Last week LSU really bowed its back against Alabama right here in the red zone. Rainey will pick up a couple. Benny Logan, the defensive tackle, makes the stop. The last five plus games, Brian, 62 opponent drives against LSU. Only six have gotten into the LSU red zone. And here's Western Kentucky at the 16-yard line. If I'm Western Kentucky, I'm taking my shots to the end zone here. I'm not going to play this conservative. I don't know how many times they're going to be down here. Let's take our shot. Play fake. Jakes. Throws. Caught inside the five. Jack Doyle. The two-year captain with a big play. And the Hilltoppers are knocking on the door. I love that call. Be aggressive off a of play action. Awan going through his reads. He finds Doyle late. Matthew almost comes over and makes that interception and Reed is there for the tackle but nice read and progression by K1 Jakes and an accurate throw gives them the ball in the three yard line for a team whose bread and butter is the run game Jakes has thrown real well so far in the first half play clock under 10. Simpson touchdown Western Kentucky Simpson with just 21 carries on the season coming into this game gets the three yard touchdown run and Western Kentucky's on the board here in Death Valley and this capacity crowd is shocked Western Kentucky just comes off the football great blocking up front and effort to get in the end zone for the touchdown First career touchdown run for Simpson. And now Casey Tinius comes on for the extra point. He had the game winning field goal last week against FIU. Penalty flags down. What an impressive drive. Ball start, number 77, offense. Five yard penalty, still a try. So we're going to mark it back five more yards here, and this is going to be more like a field goal attempt. But a 10-play, 65-yard drive in under five minutes. And that was an attitude drive. I mean, people were wondering if Western Kentucky is going to come in here with their eyes like saucers yeah. uh, on Saturday night in Death Valley. How are they going to react? The guy's going to be nervous. But uh, that was an attitude drive right there, and Willie Taggart's got to be proud of his team so far. Right down the middle, and we're tied up at seven. LSU has won 36 straight non-conference games in the regular season. But Western Kentucky, so far, playing with the number one team in the land. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. This crowd in Death Valley is stunned. As Western Kentucky put together an impressive scoring drive to tie it up at seven. Ten plays in four and a half minutes, covering 65 yards. Keyshawn Simpson with his first career touchdown run, and it's the first touchdown scored against LSU in the first quarter in the last 13 plus games. Well, they've only given up 10 touchdowns all year, so uh, this LSU Tiger. Defense. If, uh, if Western Kentucky didn't have their attention, which they may not have coming into this game, they certainly have their attention now. Jesse Roy to kick it off for the Hilltoppers. And this is Odell Beckham Jr. again. Finds a lane. Ball comes loose. Western Kentucky says they have it. And they do. A big mistake on special teams for the Tigers, giving it back to the Hilltoppers in Tiger territory. Odell Thurman thought he had a break there where he could get to the end zone. 
and he just gets that ball popped out from behind and now that's the second time that we have seen LSU put the ball on the ground and a great job by Western Kentucky of controlling that ball in bounds and taking over at the 45 yard line. Xavius Boyd number 13 stripped that ball and Vince Williams recovered it for the Hilltoppers. First and 10 at the 44 yard line of LSU. Jakes play fake wants to throw goes deep tipped and almost intercepted. Rico Brown, the intended receiver, Claiborne, almost picked it off. Let's go down to Allison. Clay, I thought this Hilltopper sideline was jacked up after that touchdown. Well, after the turnover, they absolutely erupted. One of the offensive linemen grabbed his helmet to run out there. His eyes were big as saucers. He just said, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Before that, Coach Taggart was telling his guys, what a drive, what a drive. Keep up the intensity. And he reminded them, don't lighten up, tighten up. Clay? Taggart made the comment this week that LSU is like a minor league NFL team. 12 players, that's a five-yard penalty, still second down. I'll spot this back now at the 50-yard line. But he also said, what a great opportunity for our program. Yeah, and, and what, uh, what a great opportunity for each of these individual players. He said, you know, college players, a lot of them feel they, they dream about playing in the NFL. He says, if you want to play in the NFL, Saturday night will be your audition because these guys that play for LSU, they will, be, they will be in the NFL. So show what you can do. Leave no stone unturned and let it loose on Saturday night. And they are. Second and 15 after the penalty. They go back to the Brown game and rainy. And he'll bounce ahead off of tacklers before he's brought down by Eric Reed. It's a gain of five. So third down and 10 for Western Kentucky. This is the second time facing an SEC opponent this season. For the Hilltoppers, they lost in the season opener in Nashville to Kentucky, 14 to three. It wasn't a well-played game by either side. I've got to think it gave this team a little bit of confidence, saying, "Hey, we played with an SEC opponent once before. Let's let it all hang out tonight." Right here, third down and ten. I don't know that they can block LSU's defensive line to try to push it down the field. Look for maybe a screen. Crowd coming to life again. Jakes to the outside incomplete a little too tall for Joel German. There is a marker down. Illegal motion number four offense that penalty is declined fourth down. And that's against Rico Brown the wide receiver for the Hilltoppers and the punting unit comes up. <laughs> I think they got Rico Brown for coming towards the line of scrimmage in motion. That's a penalty, but that was a missed opportunity for Western Kentucky to get the turnover. They take a shot down the field on first down, and Kwan Jakes is a little erratic. And in that play, uh, the penalty really hurt them. Odell Beckham standing at the 12-yard line. He coughed it up on his last return attempt. And he's going to let this one bounce inside the 10 yard line. A long field now for LSU. Good punt by Brakefield, a kick of 34 yards. All right, here's a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Taco Bell. Well, the offense for LSU needs to get going. That last play, the deep ball, certainly got him going. Michael Ford is their uh, speed back in the backfield. He had a good game last week, and Ruben Randall, who was really a decoy for most of the game against Alabama, you've seen he's already had a huge impact in this game with the touchdown catch. And then Andrew Jackson, the Mike linebacker for Western Kentucky, loves to play with attitude. He's a leader of that defense, and they've shown some attitude early in this game. Can you believe he doesn't have a nickname? It should be Old Hickory, shouldn't it? <laughs> Certainly. For all you historians out there, Michael Ford cut down at the 10-yard line. No gain for the sophomore running back as Keontae Young makes the stop. And that's the final play of the first quarter. Well, LSU with a big play. Touchdown pass from Jefferson to Randall. Got this crowd going on homecoming night, but Western Kentucky with a beautiful drive tied it up. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. LSU trying to be 10-0 for the first time since the 1958 National Championship team went 11-0. But they're tied seven apiece. 
Touchdown to Randall from Jefferson, 53 yards. They got the scoring going tonight, but a beautiful 10-play drive. Western Kentucky taking it in. It was Keyshawn Simpson. Taking a look at the game trends tonight. Time of possession, Western Kentucky, almost 11 minutes. Second down and 10 at the 11-yard line of LSU. Jefferson is complete. That's Odell Beckham, the exciting true freshman out of New Orleans, taken out by Tyree Robinson, a gain of 13. I think you see that Western, Western Kentucky has just had the ball. They had that 10-play drive. LSU had a one-play drive touchdown, and then the uh, the fumble on the kickoff return. So LSU hasn't really had the football a lot in the first quarter. And uh, now the second quarter, they have a chance to get some rhythm on offense. And that first down pass from Jordan Jefferson, accurate on the money. That's what we saw in practice this week. And LSU wants to see him throw the ball and do it effectively. Running the option here. Pitch to Michael Ford. He's going to pick up a four, maybe five. Young makes the tackle. That was very effective last week against Alabama. And if they can get the speed option game and continue to run that with Jordan Jefferson and Ford, I think that's a, that's what they want to hang their hat on. But they need Jordan Jefferson to throw the football off a of play action uh, if they're going to win the national championship. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about winning the national championship. And I think that Les Miles and this coaching staff believes in Jordan Jefferson as the quarterback that can lead them there, but he's got to be able to throw the football. Ford stays in the backfield on second and five. Play fake. Jefferson, time to throw, deep bomb. Incomplete. Russell Shepard almost hauled that in. He had Tyree Robinson beat. Two impressive throws down the field from Jordan Jefferson. The touchdown and that ball thrown perfectly. Russell Shepard was not open by much, but that's a play you've got to make as a wide receiver. And hmm. not an easy catch, but one you got to make to be an elite receiver in the SEC. First incompletion thrown by Jefferson tonight. He's three for four, 80 yards and a touchdown pass. Alfred Blue in the game at running back. On third and five, incomplete. Intended for Beckham. And LSU's going to have to punt. And this was just a slant route on the outside. And you got to keep coming on the slant. If you see a safety coming, you got to keep it flat. That time you see Beckham, he just did not want to go in there. And that's not, that's not what you want to put on film if you're Beckham because you get a you get a label that way and if you're scared to go in the middle then that's not good if you're a wide receiver so you got to go back to the quarterback and say I'll be there for you next time Brad wing his second punt tonight Antonio Andrews fields it at the 37 38 yard line Western Kentucky in this ballgame tied at seven they have it when we come back You're watching the SEC on ESPN from Baton Rouge, Louisiana tonight. We're tied at seven here in the second quarter. Well, Monday night ESPN, U delivers three games. First at seven, Chris Joseph leading fifth-ranked Syracuse against Manhattan. The Dick Sporting Goods NIT season tip-off at nine. Detroit taking on Notre Dame in the progressive CBE Classic at 11. Dick Sporting Goods NIT season tip-off continues with Fresno State and Stanford. Quite a week in sports it has been. And we're into basketball season now. Coach K got that tying win today. Bobby Rainey the handoff. And he's going to pick up three as Michael Brockers, the defensive tackle for LSU, makes the tackle. Of course, the tragic news out of State College, Pennsylvania this week in Joe Paterno's era ends. Penn State losing today, their first game without coach. And the Carrier Classic last night was very impressive. North Carolina defeating Michigan State. And Coach K tying Bob Knight, his mentor, with 902 career wins. As Duke will take on Michigan State Tuesday night on ESPN. I think chance he'll for like coach. 903 better than 902. Yeah, he'll have a chance <laughs> to break that record. Bobby Rainey again, another pickup of three. Minter, the middle linebacker on the stop. So third down coming up for Western Kentucky. 
Well, this is an opportunity here for Western Kentucky. You're going to see from this offense and, and Willie Taggart, who brought this offense from Stanford with Coach Harbaugh. They worked on it together, and this offense has got a lot of shifts, a lot of motions, a lot of trying to confuse the defense and create a seam, create a gap where they can run the football with Rainey. And when you get in third and three and a half, four yard situations, you can still run the football. So this is a good, a good situation for them to be in. Two for four tonight on third down, 41% on the year. They have thrown on every third down conversion attempt tonight, and they do it again, and it's complete to Doyle for another first down. Let's go down to Allison. Well, Clay, I was listening in on this LSU defense before they took the field, and defensive line coach Brick Haley's message was pretty basic. He said, guys, you have too many missed tackles. You need to get off your blocks, and you need to play with your eyes. It's that simple. Clay. All right, Allison, thank you very much. Well, right now, I think Western Kentucky offensively has them confused. They're spreading them out, uh, and they're taking advantage of some of those gaps and seams. That last play, Doyle just runs a short out route, and there's no coverage there because LSU's having a hard time getting lined up. Doyle now four catches for 37 yards. Going to go back to the ground and Simpson, and he is upended. Maybe only a one-yard gain. As Mingo makes the tackle. You know, when we were talking with John Chavis this week, he said that the potential for Barkevius Mingo is unlimited. Well, he, he kind of compared him, you know, and Coach Chavis was at Tennessee for a long time and coached a guy by the name of Leonard Little. And, uh, and what he said is Barkevius Mingo is a little bit taller and faster than Leonard Little. And if he puts on 10, 15, 20 pounds, uh, I think he could be a top 10 NFL pick. Second and 10, Tosh Sweet to Simpson. And to the 40-yard line, a gain of three. Third down and five coming up to the studio and a niche for an update. All right, Clay, first ever four-overtime game in the Big 12. And Colin Klein of Kansas State with his fifth rushing touchdown. The Wildcats over Texas A&M, 53-50 to in four OTs, fellas. Wow. You and I saw Colin Klein earlier this year. That guy's fearless. That was a tough quarterback. Yeah, he uh, he's had an outstanding year, as has the entire Kansas State team outside of one game. Third down and six. 94,000 coming to life. Pass to Rainey, and he reaches out trying to get to the first down marker, and he's going to be awfully close. It's going to depend on the spot. Ron Brooks made the tackle. And you can see that they've got the stick stretched out. Look at the versatility of Bobby Rainey. He lines up in the slot, just going to run an out route. Great hands on the outside, and then the presence to reach that football out. And I think you're right. I think he did get to the 39 yard line and a, and a first down. Just a little bit short. Rainey came into this game with 30 catches on the on the season and three touchdowns. They will put him anywhere in the formation and try to get him the football. And when you put him in the slot like that, he's a mismatch for linebackers because he's just too quick and runs too good a route for a linebacker to stay with him. Fourth and about an inch. But it sure looked like he got the first down. Here. Yeah, the knee's not down. There's no no part of him that's down. And that ball is on the 39-yard line. And they spotted him just short of the 39-yard line. Now they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Willie Taggart in Death Valley gambling. The big back Simpson is the tailback. Ninth play of the drive. They give it to the fullback Jones and he lunges ahead for a Western Kentucky first down. Impressive surge by that offensive line. Everybody in the stadium knows they're going to run that ball up the middle with Jones and that offensive line just came off the ball. Jones 270 pound fullback of course you're going to give him the football. <laughs> well the coaching staff told us this week he might be the best fullback in the country nobody knows about. Well and he was excited before the game was down on the field and he was talking trash to the LSU players he was excited and ready to play. 
Jakes wants to go back to the air. Flushed out of the pocket. Now being chased. Throws on the run. And does a good job to get it rid of it. And it'll bring up second down. Well, Western Kentucky so far tonight, four drives. They've had eight first downs. So they're right on plan. And they've scored a touchdown. They converted down there. They've taken an aggressive approach. They're throwing the ball on first down. That play right there, another case of that. They came in to this game trying to win. And, and I've got a lot of respect for Willie Taggart and, and this offense and this team in general for taking that kind of approach, coming into a very good, difficult situation. This is a program that won just two games the last two seasons. They come into this one on a five-game winning streak. Jakes takes a loss as Sam Montgomery keeps him contained. And it's a loss of three for Western Kentucky. Third down. This is an offense that likes to use the bootleg. We've seen it a number of times already in this game, getting the ball to Doyle, the tight end. They tried it again, but great coverage down the field. Eric Reed, the safety, took the post route. Nowhere to go with the football for Kwan Jakes. And you just get the feeling that as LSU starts to get a bead on what Western Kentucky is doing offensively, it's going to become more and more difficult for them to move the ball. Just over eight minutes to go here, second quarter. Third and 14 for Western Kentucky. A timeout called for by Zach Anazi, the Offensive coordinator for the Hilltoppers and Willie Taggart. And we're going to take a break as well. Third and 14 for the Hilltoppers when we come back. Western Kentucky head coach Willie Taggart has his team on the verge of bowl eligibility in his second season, and he kept his word. He told us this week he might do this. Yeah, he joked around with us that he was in the pregame. He was going to come in and take a little bit of bite of grass, a la Les Miles, and sure enough, look at him, bends down, gets a little grass, <laughs> and takes it in. It doesn't look like he liked it too much. He cracks a <laughs> smile, but <laughs> it didn't go down real easy, but he did keep his word. Willie Taggart came in and tasted the grass in Death Valley. Valley. Kind of hard to see through all that pregame smoke from the fireworks here in Baton Rouge. Third and 14 after the timeout. High snap. Jakes handles it. Out to the right. Being chased. Throws on the run. Is complete to Brown. And he gets out of bounds. Well short of the first down. And moments ago, this was Les Miles. In his traditional way. It's a piece of grass. Ooh, that was a discerning uh, piece of grass. I mean, he took his time to pick just the right piece there. <laughs> it's a big clump. Glad he didn't put that all in like a like a shot to backy. <laughs> well, this is going to be a long field goal attempt for Casey Tinius. Last week hit the game winner from 34 against FIU in a 10-9 win. Before that, had missed eight in a row. This is a long one from 49 here in Death Valley. Not even close. That's been a sore spot for Western Kentucky this year. They are four of 16 on the year on field goal attempts. So who's going to win the grass war tonight, Taggart or Miles? Right now it's tied at seven. ESPNU College Football Primetime brought to you by the new Capital One Cash Card for the people who want 50% more cash. LSU 35-0 all-time against Sunbelt teams, but getting a handful here from Western Kentucky. Tied at seven with seven and a half to go before halftime. Willie Taggart still trying to get that grass out of his teeth. <laughs> Somebody get that man a toothpick. <laughs> After the missed field goal attempt by Western Kentucky, LSU taking over at the 32-yard line. Jordan Jefferson, a quarterback, he got the start tonight. Pitches back to Spencer Ware, who's been fairly quiet tonight. Leads the team in rushing yards, has 37% of the team's carries on the year. Picks up five on first down, second and five. I've been impressed with West, Western Kentucky defensively. They have pretty much bottled up the running game for LSU and this is a, a, a an offense that is predicated on running the football power runs and play action off of it and the play action is not going to work if they're not able to run the football so give Western Kentucky credit so far Michael Ford comes back in number 42 and 
a deep handoff to Ford. Nowhere to go. In fact, that's going to be a loss of a yard on the play as Jackson makes the tackle. You and I were down on the field before the game, and Andrew Jackson is very impressive physically. Six foot two, 255. He looks like an SEC linebacker. Yeah, he's, he's a big man, and he just took on the fullback block there. It was an ISO, and didn't go down, was able to get up and make the tackle. And he loves to play with attitude. And as this game progresses and they're still in it and they're showing that they can play man for man with LSU, I think you'll see more and more of the attitude of Andrew Jackson. A third and five. Nice catch by Spencer Ware out of the backfield and he gets the first down. <laughs> And that's the one thing that Andrew Jackson will struggle with being 255 pounds when he has to guard Spencer Ware or a slot back on a route it's going to be tough for him but he's their best player on defense so they're not going to take him off the field in nickel situations he's got to learn how to cover. Now keep in mind LSU had that 53 yard touchdown pass on the big strike but the time of possession battle has been dominated by Western Kentucky in this game. Jefferson wide open Odell Beckham to the 29 yard line and LSU in business here after that 27 yard play great throw from Jordan Jefferson it's just a corner on the outside to Beckham but from the far hash to throw this ball on a rope outside the numbers on the opposite side of the field that is a big time arm Never been any question about Jordan Jefferson's arm strength. It's been about his reads and about his accuracy, but tonight he's been phenomenal. Jefferson 5 of 7, 115, a touchdown. And he's got LSU at the 28 yard line of Western Kentucky. Play fake, wants to throw again, has a receiver. Caught at the four yard line by Claymore. Chase Claymore. A 24 yard reception. And LSU is on the doorstep. Another aggressive play call off a of play action. And this time, not the howitzer on the last play, but a touch throw. And Clay Mall makes a great play to come back and, and secure the football. Clay Mall had two catches last week against Alabama. That's just his sixth catch on the year. Jefferson perfect throwing the football on this drive. First down and goal for the Tigers. Jefferson to where and he runs into Adebayo the defensive end but it's a gain of three second down and goal for LSU I think it's pretty clear coming into this game what LSU wanted to do offensively they wanted to open their offense up let Jordan Jefferson throw the ball we've seen a number of throws down the field some of them have been complete for big plays others incomplete but Either way, it's pretty clear that they wanted to establish that vertical passing game. Ten runs, eight passes so far tonight. 19th play of the evening for LSU, and Ware is tripped up in the backfield. And Western Kentucky says the ball popped loose. But uh, they're going to rule the runner down. Jamarcus Allen made the stop for the Hilltoppers. Peterson. That ball did come out, but uh, where was on the on the ground when it did? And sometimes defenders will just point the other direction, maybe hoping that they'll get yeah. the ball. The power of suggestion from the back there. That ball's still in his hand, and I think his knee was down there. We might get a challenge from the Western Kentucky sideline. You see the ball come out there late. Willie Taggart is talking to Mark Curls, the referee. As the runner was down, the Western Kentucky head coach is called timeout to challenge that it was a fumble. Well, Willie Taggart has nothing to lose here tonight. Why not challenge it? Because if he loses it, he loses the challenge for the He'll rest lose of the a game. Challenge, but uh, inside the one-yard line, you know, without him having seen the replay that we saw, you can't blame him for challenging this again. Watch where go into the pile here. And it looks like his knee was down. And then watch the ball pop out late right there. There's the football and Jamarcus Allen 43 falls on top of it. But from that look there's uh, 
not indisputable video evidence to overturn that call. And that is our best look, so that's also the same look and the best look that the replay official James Allison is going to get. Kareem Peterson, number 14, is the one who laid the lick on Spencer Ware. It's really hard to tell from that angle. We presume that this is going to be a, a third down and goal to go for LSU. Well, and these running backs for LSU, very rarely do they fumble the football. Between the three of them coming in, they had 303 touches and no no fumble. So they have not uh, put the ball on the ground very much this season. And the two interceptions thrown by Jarrett Lee last week were also rare. Just uh, five turnovers all year for LSU. Going on the field that Ware was down. Willie Taggart has challenged for Western Kentucky with 3.36 to go. The ruling on the field stands. Western Kentucky will be charged with their third and final time out of the half. And this was their one challenge for the ball game. It was just hard to tell on the angles we had. So third down and goal to go from the one. Western Kentucky has played admirably here in the first half. But LSU has a chance to take the lead back. Jefferson breaks the huddle, gets up under center. Ford is in the backfield behind the fullback Stample. Touchdown LSU. Kenny Hillier was actually the fullback on that play and dives in to put the Tigers back in front. That was not by much. Hillier was the up back. They just turned and gave it to him and Good effort to get into the end zone. Hilliard, the nephew of former LSU star Dalton Hilliard, who played for the New Orleans Saints. And the extra point by Alamo is good. It's 14 to 7, Tigers, after that eight play, 70 yard drive. The big play, Clay Ma's reception inside the five. And then Hilliard taking it in. Here's Les Miles that win last week over Alabama. It was really a validation of what he has done during his time here in Baton Rouge. And his team just goes back in front by a touchdown over Western Kentucky here tonight. Celebrating its seventh year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. All State making contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Today, $2.5 million in scholarship monies have been donated. How big was that win for Les Miles last week? Well, I think it was huge for him, not just for this season, but I still think there were people out there in that Tiger Nation that doubted him, especially last year with some of the decisions that he made. And that was a big win to go five and two head to head against Nick Saban. A win tonight for Les Miles will be the 100th of his coaching career. Antonio Andres. Gets it out to the 23. For an update on what's coming up at half, let's go to the studio and a niche. All right, Clay, at halftime, we'll recap an emotional afternoon at Beaver Stadium. Also, Boise State's championship bubble, that bursts, and Duke's Mike Krzyzewski ties Bob Knight atop the Division I wins list. All that coming up at the half. All right, Anish, we'll see you in 327. There is the Mad Hatter. 28 wins at Oklahoma State, 71 here at LSU. Bobby Rainey pick up three yards, make it four yards, so second down and six. That's 71 wins is, is, I mean, this is the toughest division in the toughest conference in college football, and what Les Miles has done here has been unbelievable when you really think about it, and for him to have to still answer questions or have to have 
that kind of a game last year to solidify his position here in Baton Rouge. It was kind of it was kind of crazy, but that was the situation. And now that he has done that and beaten Alabama now, uh, I think it 100% validates who he is and that he should be the coach here for as long as he wants to be. Second and six. And a gain of one. So third down and five as Brockers makes the tackle on Rainey. You know, you were on the, the Michigan team when he was the offensive line coach of Michigan, so you know his personality pretty well. You know, he, he gets the nickname the Mad Hatter, but he is a very calculated coach, and, and you might even say conservative. Well, he is. I mean, he's cut from the cloth of Bo Schembechler, who's one of the most conservative coaches in the history of college football, and I think that people that see him from the outside think of him as being a gambler, and he does have that flair to him, but uh, he is one of those unique coaches that is a mix of conservatism and gambling, and he's been able to have the right recipe at LSU and have success. K1 Jakes to throw complete on third down to Doyle. Boy, he likes Jack Doyle. That's a gain of seven and a first down. Well, Jack Doyle is a, is a comfort blanket for, for K1 Jakes. He came into the game with 32 catches that led the team. And I'm not quite sure how he can move his head to see with that neck roll, that big old neck roll back there. But, you know, he's he does it all. He's going to block. He's going to catch. And he's a very valuable piece of this offense. Here comes Tyron Matthew on the blitz. And Jakes is able to get a pass off and incomplete. Intended for Doyle, but Matthew was streaking in. Well, you get the sense that John Chavis is just going to start to bring some pressure. He's a little tired. Here he's going to come on the outside, Matthew, and it's a great job by Jakes just to roll away from the blitz and get rid of the football. He knows he's in trouble. Get outside the pocket and throw that ball toward the line of scrimmage where nobody can get to it. Uh, that's, a, that's a great play by the quarterback because it was the only play. Played behind Patrick Peterson last year, and uh, he has made several big plays this season much like Peterson did a year ago and wears number seven like Peterson did a year ago 13 turnovers forced and he may be caught offside here Jake's with a free play it's picked off intercepted by Brandon Taylor but I believe Matthew was offside yeah I think it was pretty clear that uh, Matthew jumped in the neutral zone Offside, number seven, defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Sometimes you get to the quarterback on the play before. You're so close, you don't get the sack just at the bottom of the screen. And then he tries to get a jump. And, and right now, Taewon Jakes just knows, I'm going to take a shot because I got a free play. So it'll be second down and five at the 39-yard line. John Chavis. So many... Excellent players, so many great athletes to work with on this defense this year. More pressure from the edge for LSU. Jakes is hit as he throws, incomplete. That time it was the corner, Ron Brooks on the blitz. Everybody likes to talk about Tyron Matthew, but Ron Brooks plays the same position in the nickel and dime. You're going to see him right here at the top of the screen. He'll come off just like Matthew does. This time they change it up, and he just beats the offensive tackle to the quarterback. and. If Western Kentucky is going to start moving the ball, they've got to realize that pressure is now coming. LSU has figured out our blocking schemes, and they have to run shorter routes uh, because John Chavis is going to keep coming after them. Best secondary Chavis says he has ever had. We force a third and five situation here on Western Kentucky. Jakes will hand it off to Rainey, looking for a hole up the middle and finds enough wiggle room to get the first down. Rainey carried the ball. Angle stop. Can't tell you how much it helps an offense when you can run the ball on third and five, third and six, and still convert first downs. And it takes the pressure off your quarterback. It prevents defenses from blitzing you because they're worried about getting split up the middle. No timeouts for Western Kentucky. Under 50 seconds to go before half. Pressure from behind. Jakes goes down. It's Brooks again. And this time he gets the sack. And a timeout called here by LSU. They're hoping they might get the ball back before halftime. You're going to see Brooks the same blitz, the same spot, 
It's going to come off, and the tackle just can't get out there fast enough. Clemens to pick him up. That's not fair to the tackle right there because Brooks is just too fast. John Chavis had a national championship caliber defense in 1998 at Tennessee. Nine of his starters that year went to the NFL, and you get the feeling that this defense for the Chief could be just as good as that one 13 years ago, maybe even better. Well, they've got really good hybrid players. Brooks and Matthew can play off the slot. They've got defensive ends that are fast enough, that are big enough to play the run, but uh, when you play that kind of a defense where you've got a lot of versatile defenders that you don't know where they're coming from, it's very difficult to play offensively. Forty-three seconds to go before half. Oh my! Brooks run. Brooks again just crushed Bobby Rainey. Practically took him out of his shoes. And another LSU timeout. A loss of four. It's at the 35. It's the same thing, and you're going to continue to see it right there. You get, uh, but they're bringing off the edge there. And Brooks again, three plays in a row has come off the edge. Freeze right here. You're going to see the pinch. Both guys, Matthew and Brooks, they love this, and then they drop out. This is a zone dog that John Chavis loves, and nobody picked up Ron Brooks. On well, Monday, Jesse Palmer and David Pollock will uh, talk about the week's big games, get you ready for the week ahead. It's the Palmer and Pollock Show every Monday on ESPNU at 1 Eastern. College football lives here every day on ESPNU. You know, there's LSU defense starting to come to life. They gave up a first quarter touchdown tonight for the first time all year. And now a third and 19. The pitch to Rainey. Looking for operating room on the near side. Ball comes loose. Squirts out at the 37. Did LSU recover him? No indication yet. Yes, LSU football. LSU's defense has forced a turnover in 18 straight now. Well, and again, Tyron Matthews got nine fumble calls on his career. He's in the uh, in the pile again. Question is, was Bobby Rainey's knee down? It may may have been right there. Problem is that uh, Willie Taggart has used his challenge. Well, the officials are going to review this. Yep. And based on the look that we had, uh, I think I think this will be overturned because it was pretty clear as you go back his right knee. Let's just make sure that the football was still in possession. The football's there and the knees there and I, I think that's pretty clear that uh, that was not a fumble and if this is overturned this is significant because it's going to give Western Kentucky a chance to punt and to flip the field here and put LSU in a long field situation otherwise LSU takes over at the 36 of Western Kentucky with 31 seconds to go before halftime. The ruling on the field of fumble. But based on the look that we had, I think this is going to be overturned. There's Tyron Matthew. It appeared that he did cause that ball to come loose. Yeah, there were a lot of guys in there. Uh, I don't know if it was him or one of the defensive linemen coming to knock that football out. But Maybe Anthony Ferguson was in there too, number 56, to help. But what a defense. I mean, they swarm. They are physical. They hit you. Here's another look. James Allison is the replay official tonight. And that's the best view we have. That's the best view that James Allison is going to get.
Western Kentucky is hoping this is overturned to give Hendricks Brakefield a chance to come on and kick and flip the field here for the Hilltoppers. Well, if if this is overturned and they can punt this ball and get into the locker room only down 14 to 7 on the road in Death Valley against the number one team in the country, I think that the Western Kentucky would be very happy and Willie Taggart can regroup, make some adjustments and come out and see what they can do in the second half. After further review, the ruling is the runner was down at the 36 and a half yard line. It'll be fourth and 17 at the 36 and a half yard line. With a smile on <laughs> Willie Taggart's face. He is loving this tonight. Well, it was interesting talking with him this week and talked to him down on the field before the game. And he's the kind of guy that's going to enjoy tonight. You know, some coaches would come in and they'd stress out, are we going to be able to compete with this team? You know, am I going to get any guys hurt? Uh, but he was going to enjoy this night to the fullest. And I think that that kind of an attitude has filtered down to his players. And it's important that they enjoy this. A once in a lifetime opportunity to play against the number one team in the country. Well, LSU is going to use its last timeout. All timeout. As Willie Taggart has the punting unit out on the field. Breakfield averaging 42 yards per punt. So hopefully they can uh, flip the field here on LSU with 30 seconds to go before half. You know, the other thing I thought that Willie Taggart said this week that was interesting was that, you know, Western Kentucky is in the thick of the Sun Belt Conference Championship race. And they're 5-1 and one in the conference. And they had a lot of friends, even his mom, uh, he didn't want to talk to him because they were going to try to convince him not to play his best players in this game because he didn't want him to get hurt so that they could go back. And they still have big games against North Texas and Troy. And they have a potential to win the Sun Belt. <laughs> it was a unique situation because you normally think of not playing your best players when you've already sealed something up. But coming on the road against LSU, he said, I'm going to play all of my guys. I don't want to talk to anybody that's going to try to convince me otherwise. Low snap. Breakfield handles it. Gets off a pretty good kick. Fair catch called for and muffed. Ball is loose and scooped up at the 16-yard line. And a pretty good recovery there by Craig Lawson for LSU. But a scary situation there for LSU. 17 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, in that, in that, in that, in this situation, obviously you want to catch the punt. But in that situation, you just want to fall on the football. You try to pick it up and advance it. You're in danger of fumbling again. I thought he might have fumbled after this last hit right here. Andrew Jackson came in and just cleaned him up. Jackson playing on all the special teams as well. They don't take him off the field, but I know that play there took less miles breath away for a minute. Odell Beckham Jr. has not had a good first half. He coughed up a kickoff return earlier tonight. He kind of alligator armed a, a, a route in the secondary and then muffed that punt. And he was one of the players that really stood out to me at practice how fluid he is. He's a young kid just a true freshman and he's going to play a lot of football here in Baton Rouge. But tonight has not been his best night. The receiver gave a fair catch signal, muffed the kick, recovered by a teammate. By rule, the ball is dead at that point. After the runner was down, there's a personal foul, number 39, kicking team. That penalty will be enforced from the dead ball spot, first down. A lot Please going on in that play. Clock. Joey Dunphy with the personal foul for Western Kentucky but LSU has 17 seconds to work with and after all of that they're going to spot it at the 32 yard line. Yeah I didn't see the uh, there was the fair catch yeah. He didn't see that on the first replay but it's very clear that he uh, made that fair catch signal and then once it was muffed can't be advanced. So Jordan Jefferson have to hurry here he has had an excellent first half first start of the year deep pass incomplete that was Beckham the intended receiver Robinson the cornerback in on the coverage and that was the first throw that I've seen Jordan Jefferson miss because Beckham was behind the corner and had an opportunity for a touchdown if that ball is thrown down the field and allows Beckham to use his speed to go and get it 
LSU may have got a cheap touchdown before halftime. So 19 seconds to go. Spencer Ware in the backfield. Three receivers. On second and ten. Jefferson moves out of the pocket, wants to run. And slides down just shy of the 40-yard line. Big run for Jordan Jefferson, a gain of 26. They got to hurry. They get up to the line, nine seconds to go, and he spikes it. Jefferson. And that's this is the element that Jordan Jefferson brings to this offense. Two high safeties, man to man underneath. That's a prime time for the quarterback to use his legs. You see, he just outruns a linebacker and then gets down. And with eight seconds left in the first half, unfortunately, they don't have any timeouts. So in this situation, they're going to have to throw a quick route to the outside of the field, get out of bounds, and then try to attempt a field goal. I don't think Les Miles could hope for much more from Jordan Jefferson tonight in his first start. He's looked real good. Five seconds to go. Heaves it up toward the end zone. Looking for Randall. Tipped and almost caught. Keontae Young tipped it up into the air, and Randall almost hauled it in on the last play of the half. This was a little bit surprising that they took a shot to the end zone. I felt like they could have. He almost came down with that ball, but they could have thrown that ball to the outside, got four, five, six yards, and attempted a 50-yard uh, field goal. Well, Western Kentucky on the road against the number one team in the nation, down just seven at the half, and Western Kentucky will have the ball to start the second half. Let's go to Allison. Thank you, Clay. Coach Miles, you give Jordan Jefferson his first start of the year. How has he performed? I think well. The, uh... You know they're they're doing a they're they're loading the box and making it very difficult for us to run. So we're throwing some deep balls and I think we'll continue to do that. Western Kentucky has moved the ball at times. What must you do defensively in the second? We got to tackle cleanly and uh, we need to settle down. I don't know that we're playing with a real emotional pitch at this point. Okay, thanks, Coach. LSU's Les Miles looking for his 100th career win tonight. It's uh, been more difficult than maybe a lot of people expected. Just a touchdown difference. Jefferson 158 total yards in that first half and a touchdown pass. Now to the studio and an East Roth. This is ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by Five Hour Energy. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. LSU, the number one team in the land, leading 14 to 7 at halftime. Let's go down to Allison Williams, who's with Coach Willie Taggart. Thank you, Clay. Coach Taggart, your team is down by just seven to the number one ranked team in the country. How do you think they've performed so far? Uh, they, put, they performed great. We told our guys at the beginning of the game, I want them to come out and play hard. I wanted them to uh, come out and tackle and, and block and play with great technique, you know, and, and then the way we play, you know, it's, it's, that's going to show the term of victory. Victory is the how we play, you know, and, and we keep it close and no, never mo know what's going to happen. Are you guys having fun tonight? Oh, this is great. I mean, who has it better? You know, this is great, great atmosphere, and our guys are playing all out. You got a number one team, you're only down by seven at the half. Like, come on. Thanks, Coach. Thank you very much. Play up to you. Yeah, they're playing this about right. Two to one, they lead the time of possession at halftime. They haven't turned the ball over which is very important on the road, especially here, and they forced a turnover. Yeah, and I, I love Willie Taggart's attitude. How do you not love his attitude? You know, before they went on the five-game winning streak coming into this game, they were 2-34 and 34 in their last 36 games. So Willie Taggart uh, has starting to build a little reputation of his own as an excellent coach in the Sun Belt Conference, and I think his attitude tonight has been perfect. Antonio Andrews will let it go and Western Kentucky will start at the 20 yard line. Well, Les Miles made a decision at quarterback here tonight to start Jordan Jefferson for the first time this season. Not too bad in the first half. 158 total yards and a touchdown pass. Yeah, and I think he looked really comfortable throwing the football. We know that he can run the speed option and get out and use his legs. But uh, I think coming into this game, the LSU coaching staff wanted to see how he was going to do throwing the ball and he's done well both throwing it short and intermediate but his long balls have been really on target and 
If he can get that part of his game going, uh, look out for LSU. They'll get better offensively. Western Kentucky starting with the ball here in the second half. And they'll start on the ground with Bobby Rainey. Minimal gain. Second down and nine after the tackle by Ryan Baker. Here are the stats from the first half. And again, the time of possession, very impressive by Western Kentucky. Yeah, and it's a product of the turnover, as you mentioned, and then the one-play drive. The touchdown pass to Reuben Randall certainly affected that also. But uh, now Western Kentucky gets the ball to start the second half, and they've got to put something together here, get some positive yardage uh, if they want to get back in this football game. They had four drives in that first half of eight plays or longer. And on play number two of the half, Jake's rolling out, hits Kadeem Jones, the fullback. He is barreled out of bounds about a yard short of the first down marker by Baker. It's a gain of eight. So third down and short here for Western Kentucky. And uh, they're going to try and convert and make a statement here right out of the locker room. I'm just not sure how Kadeem Jones makes catches like that and runs like that at 275 pounds. It's just, it's an unbelievable thing. He's a great athlete and uh, he's a value to his offense and a value to his team because his attitude is one that he wants to come in here and he wants to win this game. He might get it here on third and short. 50% on third down tonight is Western. It is the fullback Jones. And he is a tough man to bring down. As you might assume, Mingo is able to do it, but after a gain of six, they'll move the sticks. Well, and Kevin Minter, the middle linebacker, ran right by him. You'll see Minter right in the middle of your screen. Nobody blocked him, and he just ran right by the big fullback. I'm not sure how you miss a 270-pound fullback. <laughs> or maybe Minter just said, I don't think I want to go head on with 270. I'll just take the quarterback. Kevin Minter, the middle linebacker for LSU, played behind Kelvin Shepard last year. John Chavis really likes him as a leader, wants him actually to be more vocal for LSU. On first and 10, deep drop for Jakes, throws to the outside and behind the intended receiver, Rico Brown. And Jack Doyle also in the vicinity, second down. Jakes in the first half really managed the game for Western Kentucky. He's now 10 of 18 for 86 yards. Well, it's been impressive what he's been able to do. You, as you mentioned earlier in the game, he was brought to Western Kentucky when they ran the spread offense to use his mobility on the edge. But now he's in a pro-style offense, having to throw a lot from the pocket. And I think he's done a good job tonight. On second and ten, it's Bobby Rainey. And he'll get three. Kwan Jakes lost his starting job at quarterback in week three. He got it back when Brandon Dowdy, then the backup, got hurt. He suffered a year-ending knee injury. So he's been the guy again here for the last few weeks. But he's playing under his third offensive coordinator. It's been a tough time at Western Kentucky for the junior quarterback. I think he's just starting to learn this offense and understand where all the receivers are, where his outlets and checkdowns are. And in this instance, third and seven, you got to expect the pressure from John Chate as much like he did in the first half. And right up at the top, keep an eye on Morris. He was hit by Matthew as he threw it, but penalty flags all over the place. Before the snap, false start, number 76, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. That's the right guard, Adam Smith. That time, uh, Matthew came off the edge, and that's the thing. I'm up here watching just like a quarterback would watch, and I watch the edges of this LSU defense with Brooks and with Matthew, and I don't know which one's coming, so I know that the guys that are down the field probably don't know either. It's very difficult. Well, Western Kentucky has converted three of its last four third down attempts, but this is third and 12. Jakes feeling the heat, got rid of it. Ron Brooks was barreling in, and he popped Jakes as he got rid of it. And Western Kentucky will have to punt. Boy, when they bring the pressure, they bring well, it fast, and they bring a lot of people. Yep, those are the two guys we were talking about, Brooks and Matthew. They converge on the quarterback, and... 
right now the adjustments that John Chavis is making defensively for LSU is a little bit ahead of what uh, Zach Azani the offensive coordinator from Western Kentucky is, is doing right now they've got to protect their edges or get rid of the football quicker because those two guys Matthew and Brooks are coming Matthew back to return after Odell Beckham had some return issues in the first half Breakfield the kick Matthew fields it at the 25 and finds a way Nice return to the 45 yard line of Western Kentucky a 41 yard punt and a 29 yard return And he just went right up the middle good blocking by the LSU punt return team and then he just goes north and south and the speed of Matthew nice return into Western Kentucky territory Matthew is the primary punt return man for the Tigers but Maybe in a game like this, they thought they'd give Beckham a couple of looks in the first half, but now they're back to Matthew, and it pays dividends. First and ten for LSU. And Michael Ford. With a gain of three. Jared Lee's on the sideline tonight for LSU. 9-0 as the Tigers starter this season. Almost 1,300 passing yards and 13 touchdowns, but he played just 11 snaps against Alabama last week and threw those two interceptions. Yeah, it was a nightmarish week for Jared Lee in the biggest game of, of LSU's season, the biggest game of his career. It just didn't go well, and he didn't have a chance to, to uh, atone for those mistakes as Jordan Jefferson came in and played well enough to win. And Jefferson going up top, going deep to Randall again. Incomplete. Darius Brooks, a great job this time on Randall. That is the play that Randall scored a touchdown on in the first half. Yeah, and Darius Brooks got burnt deep behind him in the first quarter. This time, he's not going to let Randall get behind him. And Jefferson th throws a nice ball, an opportunity for Randall to go up and get that ball. But give credit to Darius Brooks in good position. And when he's in phase with the receiver, looks back to the quarterback and is able to make a play on the ball. Jefferson's going to come up under center. Blue is in the backfield on third down at six. Play clock down to five. It will be Alfred Blue. First down and more. He is a big punishing back, and those are not boos. That is Blue. First down, a gain of 15 yards for the 6'2", 215 pounder. They've got a lot of talent at halfback. You bring in Spencer Ware, then Michael Ford's a little change of pace, and then Alfred Blue. They're all true sophomores, and at 6'2", 215 pounds, Blue has got the speed and the power, and the future of the running game at LSU is in good hands with those three guys. No doubt about it. Plus, they got a true freshman at Kenny Hilliard who has scored a touchdown tonight, also in the wings. First down for the Tigers. And they go to blue again. Great speed to the outside of first down. And steps out at the 14-yard line. Another big pickup. Give him 13 there. Jordan Jefferson has been running this offense tonight in his first start of the year. Do you think we might still see Jared Lee tonight? I think you might. I think you might see him if this game gets out of hand. But I really believe that the uh, LSU coaching staff believes that Jordan Jefferson is going to be the quarterback that's going to lead this team the rest of the year. And he's shown tonight that he can handle it. Well, Jefferson recovers the bobbled snap. And Xavius Boyd makes the tackle. He actually picks up three yards on a busted play. <laughs> Right on cue, we say he can handle it, and he fumbles the snap. It never fails. Sorry, I jinxed you, Jordan. <laughs> but no, I think at the beginning of the year coming in, remember, it was going to be Jordan Jefferson. And then he had the suspension and the issues legally off the field, and they had to go to Jarrett Lee, and all of a sudden, Jarrett Lee plays pretty good. Actually second in the SEC in passing efficiency, 13 touchdowns. But last week was a fundamental change in what happened in the Alabama game, and I think uh, Jordan Jefferson has taken this situation and run with it. Quick throw. Randall to the end zone. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown LSU. Second touchdown catch for Randall tonight.
big wide receiver. This is just a quick slant. See if he gets this ball in the end zone before he goes down. Looks like his elbow's down, yeah. Elbows down, knees down, a lot of it's down, and that ball's not across the goal line. And they come out quickly to try and kick the extra point, but the officials whistle this so they can review it. Now, Reuben Randall feared that he was down at about the half yard line. A high school shortstop back in the day. Great athlete. He was scouted by several Major League Baseball teams before deciding to come here to LSU. He has been an excellent player. It was a, uh, he said frustrating week last week playing against Alabama because he didn't get many looks. He caught two balls, really inconsequential plays, but uh, he said unless Miles talked to him on the sideline and calmed him down, he was getting into a into a little bit of a funk and uh, and coach Miles talked and said look if you're taking two guys it's opening up for other guys so just play your role on the team I know you want to perform in the biggest game in the biggest stage but part of being a teammate is is doing what you need to do to win and uh, and that kind of settled Ruben down and uh, they, they got out of Tuscaloosa with a win and uh, credit Les Miles that is one mantra he will not compromise is no one is bigger than the team including himself and that's uh, that was the first thing he learned from Bo Schembechler and it, it certainly helped him last week. I think you could say the same thing about D'Angelo Peterson the tight end. I mean he usually catches more balls than he did last week. He had just the one catch for minus two but Peterson and Randall taking attention opened up some opportunities for Michael Ford in that option game especially in the second half last week. After further review the ruling is the runner was down short of the goal line. It's LSU's ball. First and goal So take the touchdown off the board. For now. For now. <laughs> well, you got to think that uh, Kenny Hilliard, the, the fullback, he's the one that got the touchdown earlier in the game, but he's their short yards and goal line back. He's at the fullback position now. And he gets it. Kenny Hilliard, touchdown number two. That's got to feel good for the rookie. Two carries tonight for Hilliard. And two touchdowns. He's supposed to take the football over and give it to Ruben Randall, you know, so that he, because he's the one that got, got him down there. But. Like you said, nobody's bigger than that's the team. That's right, that's right. And Alamo comes on for the extra point. Alamo, of course, the hero last week with the game winner. Hilliard. And LSU has a two touchdown cushion now. First home night game since week two. This crowd was primed, especially after that win in Tuscaloosa last week. Ready to welcome the boys home and they got a two touchdown lead now. Tell you what, it's my first time being down on the field with the, Mike the Tiger. I saw him, they were parading him around in the cage. I, I was a little too close. That was that was intimidating. I would always, you know, pull him right in front of the visiting team. I mean, that's have an effect on you. I'm a sloppy eater too, and I get stuff on my tie. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that cage <laughs> after I just got done eating. Antonio Andrews from the one yard line on the return for Western Kentucky. Nice return. Gets loose into LSU territory. Finally tracked down and run out of bounds. Morris Claiborne finally caught up. They're going to mark it at the 26 yard line of LSU, a 73 yard return. A couple great blocks. You see the block at the end on the punter. That's Tyree Robinson, the corner, and then just not enough speed for him to get by Mo Claiborne with a touchdown saving tackle. But big play for the Hilltoppers. Antonio Andrews, the third string tailback, a sophomore out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Doesn't get a lot of carries for Western Kentucky because of Bobby Rainey, but 
Makes a big play there in special teams. Second drive for Western Kentucky that starts in LSU territory and a little razzle dazzle. Bo Brand on the end around and he gets it to the 10. In fact, they're going to mark him out at the nine. 17 yards on that play. Great block on the outside. Here's Brand. He's going to come around. Watch the top of the screen. 77. Jeffries gets a block right there on Sam Montgomery. Which springs Brand now inside the 10 yard line. Brand is the tailback on first down and goal to go for Western Kentucky. And he gets it down to the two yard line. Eric Reed. Maybe making a touchdown saving tackle on Rainey. It's a gain of seven. Second down and goal. Wow, wouldn't would this be a great answer for Western Kentucky if they can punch this ball in after coming out after halftime in a seven point game. You give up a drive to LSU and to be able to come back with the kick return reverse and if they can punch this in you got to believe the momentum will go back to Western Kentucky believe it or not in the second and a half against the number one team in the nation. Crowd trying to help out this defense. The 270 pound fullback Jones is in. And he gets it. And he's going to be stopped short of the goal line. It'll bring up third down and goal at the one. Now LSU expected that. And they made the stop. It's interesting right here, third down now, Clay. In this kind of a game, you got to believe that Willie Taggart's going to let it all hang out. And so this is two down territory. They go for it. So that being said, anticipate maybe a play action pass here. And the guy they love to go to is Doyle, the tight end, number 82. Right here. Jakes to throw. Oh, yeah. And he tried to hit Doyle, but it was too high. Fourth down. And he had him. They just ran the belly pass and released Jack Doyle on the corner route. And you're going to see he fooled the defense. They came up, and if that ball was thrown accurately, it was a touchdown. And sure enough, they'll go for it here on fourth down, just like we thought. to Jones stopped and LSU will take over on downs you see a time and again when you have an opportunity to make a play you got to make it and that third down play was it if they were going to score that was the play and now the momentum Swings back to the Tigers with a big fourth down stop. A couple of cracks at the end zone, and LSU's defense holds. ESPNU College Football Primetime brought to you by the new Capital One Cash Card for the people who want 50% more cash. LSU's defense third in the nation in total D. They just showed why on that last series for Western Kentucky. Holding the Hilltoppers out of the end zone. They have uh, held opponents without a touchdown in 29 of 38 quarters this year. They take over on downs after the stand. And Jordan Jefferson will plunge ahead for a yard just to get a little more breathing room away from that goal line. John Chavis really has a masterful defense this year. Oh, he certainly does. I mean, you combine the talent that they have here at LSU with the experience that uh, that John Chavis has had in the SEC, being at Tennessee and now coming over to LSU. Uh, he's one of the smartest defensive coordinators uh, in the business, and you see the adjustments that they've made. Second half, it's been tough on uh, the Hilltoppers to move the football. Looking at a long field here now for the LSU offense, second and nine. Jefferson away from center, hands off to Michael Ford. He'll be hit after a short game. Michael Ford. 
Montera Smith there, the defensive end, and a couple of other Hilltoppers combining it on the tackle. A gain of two, so third down and seven for Ellis. And an official's timeout on the field. A player is down for LSU. It is Chris Falk, the left tackle. And the training staff has come out to check on the 6'6", 325-pound tackle of Slidell, Louisiana. Let's take a look at the quest for the coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper, Georgia. An impressive win in Athens today over Auburn. 45-7, to the final. Murray had four touchdown passes in that game for the Dogs. you got to give credit to Mark Richt. After the first two weeks of the year, they have been on a tear, and all of a sudden, well, the rest of the SEC is starting to take notice of the Bulldogs, and uh, whoever ends up being in that uh, SEC championship game, if Georgia can win out and controls their own destiny, then... Uh, they're going to have an opportunity maybe to face these Tigers, and it'll be an interesting matchup as, as Georgia gets better defensively. They've been good all year, but they're getting even better, and Aaron Murray and Isaiah Crowell got enough offense to compete. Here's a look at the updated SEC East Division standings. And South Carolina beat Florida today to keep their hopes alive. The final in that one, 17-12. As Jefferson goes back to throw from the end zone, he is locked up, got rid of it, ball loose, and scooped up by Michael Ford. That is going to be ruled incomplete, but there's a penalty flag down. Yeah, they're going to rule this an incomplete pass with an intentional grounding, which would be a safety. Intentional grounding, number nine, offense. Quarterback was in the pocket, threw the pass where there was no eligible receiver. Penalties, safety. So Western Kentucky can put two on the board and they'll get the football back. Bo Adebayo with that play on Jefferson. And this is just knowing where you are on the field and you got to get rid of that football before you get pressure. And in that case, you got to be careful with the ball. Luckily, Jefferson's arm was coming forward, so it was an incompletion and not a fumble. But either way, a safety for the Hilltoppers and you know, in that situation, you got to know he had a one receiver route on the outside, Clay, and it was double covered. And you know you don't have a good play from the start. And when you're in your own end zone, you always have to have a contingency plan. And your contingency plan is to get out of trouble. And right there, he just didn't have that plan and then got caught. Would you say that's the first real mistake that Jefferson has made here tonight? Well, I think it's the first time he's got caught uh, not knowing what to do in the situation. And uh, if you go back and we'll take a look at it, you're going to see uh, he's got his receiver down here. He's going to run a fly route, and there's double coverage over the top, one receiver route, and you got to know that at the quarterback position. And when they roll over the top, you know you can't throw that ball. So right now, throw it out of bounds and do it quickly. And uh, that's just being prepared at the quarterback position, knowing that you got a bad play. Bo Adebayo. Getting the start in this game for Western Kentucky because the starting defensive end Jared Clendenin out this week with a broken foot and he comes up with a big play here in Baton Rouge to make this game 21 9 and the Hilltoppers are going to get the ball back after the free kick. And you got to put a little bit of that on the play caller as well you know having a one receiver route with your quarterback taking a seven step drop in your own end zone. Uh, that's that's a tough position to put your quarterback in. Harrison kicks it off from the 20. Andrews with a great return last time. Comes to the near side on this return and gets it out to the 31 yard line. He has the home court of college hoops. Action continues Sunday. A doubleheader from the Ticket City Classic. First to two. Number seven, Vandy taking on Cleveland State. Then at four, Harrison Barnes leading the number one ranked North Carolina Tar Heels against UNC Asheville. College Hoops on the U Sunday. Vandy looked good with a win over Oregon yesterday. Barnes didn't have any trouble shooting outside no. on the ship. You'd think that would be difficult, but all those guys look pretty smooth on that ship. So here's Western Kentucky with a little momentum again. It's Bobby Rainey out to the 35, a gain of four. 
Benny Logan making the hit. There is Eric Reed, the free safety for LSU, one of the heroes from that game last week. It was that interception that really changed the momentum late in that contest. Yeah, I thought it was funny. He was saying this week that he went to his economics classes and he got a standing ovation when he walked in. Everybody recognized him all of a sudden. And he's a very humble kid, very smart kid. Guess that's why he's taking the economics class. But great story last week for, about him in a great game. Rainey. And a couple more. It's going to bring up third down. And about three yards. Anthony Johnson in on the stop. Eric Reed probably gets a lot of his speed from his dad. Eric Sr. still holds LSU records in the 110 meter hurdles. And Eric Reed, that, that name. He's in the Hall of Fame. His dad's yeah. in the LSU Hall of Fame. And his, his mom was an athlete, too. She played on the, uh, the Baton Rouge. Wildcats women's professional football team. She was a tight end and a defensive end, and she said, I taught Eric everything you know. <laughs> the Reed family, quite a quite a story here in the state of Louisiana. Third and four. Jakes rolling out. And in trouble. Gets it downfield. Tipped and picked off. Taj Jones intercepts it at the 41-yard line. First turnover tonight for Western Kentucky. It's tough playing quarterback in Death Valley against this pressure defense. K1 Jakes has been running for his life all game again, being chased by Mingo and just tried to force this ball into Rainey. And Matthew gets his hands on the ball again. Taj Boyd, the beneficiary. After the Taj Jones interception, LSU taking over at the 42 of Western Kentucky, leading 21 to 9 here late in the third quarter. Here's a look at the BCS standings and some updated scores on this board as well. Oregon has just scored to take a 21 9 lead on number four, Stanford. Alabama leading 7 0 at Mississippi State. That game is at halftime. Oklahoma State, a big winner today. Kenny Hilliard in the backfield for LSU. He'll take it on the pitch and hit the backfield and dumped at the 45-yard line by Ben Duvall, the weak side linebacker, a loss of three. Well, sudden change defense. You get a turnover, and right now he's going to come through the A-gap right in between the guard and the center, and he just gets lost in there. The offensive line for LSU does not account for Ben Duvall, and a tackle for loss brings up a second and 13. That was the first turnover tonight for Western Kentucky, and now LSU trying to make him pay. Alfred Blue checks in in the backfield. He's number four. And he'll get it on a delayed handoff, and look at the room. Alfred Blue going to the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. A 45-yard gallop. See why all these fans are excited about Alfred Blue. That was a pretty impressive run. LSU now this season has scored 90 points off of turnovers this year. It's 28-9 with 2.53 to go in the third quarter. Check out the vision by the young sophomore to cut back right there and then the burst and the speed to finish it off. Alfred Blue with the touchdown run of 45 yards. Believe it or not, Brian, the longest run by an LSU running back for a touchdown this year was a 45-yard touchdown run. Wow. And now this crowd breathing a little easier. It was uh, a little too close for comfort there for quite a while. But now here late in the third quarter, it's 28-9. Starting to get their bounce back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> On homecoming night, the worst thing that could have happened here in Baton Rouge is lose to Western Kentucky. 
after that big win over Alabama. I mean, there's still a quarter and three minutes to go, but certainly things look a lot better for LSU right now. James Hairston with the kick into the end zone. Andrews is going to bring it out. It's been pretty perfect, uh, impressive, I should say, in the return game tonight and gets it to the 25. Andrews. Let's go back and take a look at the vision of young Alfred Blue. And if you stop it right here, look at his vision right here. Look at his eyes. And then look at what he's looking at over here. He sees this. That's not easy to see all the time as a back. And that's just something that you have naturally. And then Alfred Blue's got the ability to make uh, everybody eat his dust there at the <laughs> back end. I can't get over how quick he is for how big he is. Yeah. He's, he's almost as big as a lot of fullbacks. There's Bobby Rainey with a big run of his own. Out to the 40-yard line. Read the tackle. It's a gain of 14 for Bobby Rainey. He now has 19 carries for 60 or 67 yards. Again, coming in as the nation's fourth leading rusher. Averages 130 yards per game, but he's facing a defense unlike any he has seen so far this well, year. And I think, honestly, Clay, I think he's earned the respect of this defense with the way that he's played tonight, both running the ball, catching the ball out of the backfield, and at the end of the day, that's pretty much all you can ask for is to gain the respect of the guys you're playing against. He runs right into the teeth of that front. Jones, who made that interception moments ago, makes the tackle here. A lot of pressure on K1 Jakes. And this is the calling card of John Chavis and LSU defensively. Edge pressure with Brooks and Matthew and these defensive ends. They are relentless. They cycle in eight, nine guys within the course of the game, and they just continue to pressure you, and the result are turnovers. And that's why coming into this game, they were plus 15 in the turnover margin, which was second in the country. It's because of their ability to get to the quarterback. Second and nine for Western Kentucky. Brainy finds some room out on the near side gets to the 45 yard line and then he's pulled down by Reed after a gain of six so third down and manageable coming up for the Hilltoppers. I think in the beginning of this game you didn't see a whole lot of pressure from LSU defensively and we heard coach Miles at halftime talk about uh, we need some more urgency we need to play with some more passion and uh, this second half this team has played with more passion more energy and more uh, attention to detail and getting to the quarterback defensively. Under a minute to go here in the quarter. Third down and three. Western Kentucky 6 of 14 tonight on third down. Jakes gets away from a sack, but not that time. Pulled down by Mingo. Second on the team in sacks for LSU. He drops Jakes for a loss of nine. Well, I'm not sure how Jakes got out of this or how Ryan Baker, the linebacker 22, was unblocked and had a free shot. He didn't wrap up, just tried to hit, hit the quarterback. And then Mingo, one thing about Mingo that you know is that his motor is high, and he's not going to give up on any play. And you see his speed. He can run down any quarterback in college football. He's that fast. Matthew. Nifty return. And gets it to the 30-yard line. Ball comes loose, but they're going to mark it down. All right, let's go to the studio for an update with Anish Shroff. Clay, Oregon, and Stanford, the Cardinal unbeaten. They haven't lost since losing to Oregon last year, but on fourth down, Darren Thomas of the Ducks finds DeAnthony Thomas. There's that Oregon speed. Ducks go up 22 to 7, 22 to 9. Stanford just scored, so it's 22 15 now. All right, Anish, thank you very much. Uh, those injuries coming back to yeah. hurt Stanford. I mean, all those guys that they had hurt, both tight ends were banged up. Alfred Blue. What a powerful runner. It appeared that he was tripped up at about the 32 yard line. Turned it into a good run. Penalty marker down. Boy, and the on the Mark Curls. First 
personal foul, face mask, number 17, defense, away from the play. That's a 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. And C.J. Odom, the middle linebacker, a transfer from the Miami Hurricanes who pulled on the face mask. And that's the end of the third quarter. LSU has opened up a 28-9 lead. A goal line stand in the quarter for LSU. And a couple of touchdowns. And LSU feeling a lot better going to the fourth. Greece, do you understand this? There's Jordan Jefferson, who has had a pretty good night tonight in his first start of the year. Seven for 12, 148 yards passing, and a touchdown. He's also run for 20 yards. Question is, has he done enough tonight to warrant a start next week and the week after that? And where does this team go? Does it go with Jordan Jefferson? We haven't seen Jarrett Lee at all tonight. And uh, where do we where do we go from here? Where does Les Miles go from here? And I think there's a clock issue down on the field that they're trying to get ironed out. And Hopefully Mark Curls is going to fill us in here. The foul on the last play was a live ball foul. By rule, the period must be extended for one on time down. We'll play one play. It will be the last play of the third period. There you have it. Yeah, the personal foul call on C.J. Odom on the last play, the last run. So we'll have another another down. There's Willie Taggart, second year head coach of Western Kentucky. Even though this is starting to get away from the Hilltoppers, he's got to feel pretty good by the way his team's played tonight. Jefferson under center, Michael Ford in the backfield. One untimed down to end the third quarter. LSU looking big. Jefferson in trouble now. Throws it down. Field has a man caught at the 16. <laughs> Jarvis Landry makes the catch. And that's how the third quarter will end. That is the end of the third period. Tried to get to the head of man wide open down the middle of the field there, but the safety comes over, so Jordan Jefferson doesn't panic, uses his feet, extends the play, and then gives an opportunity. Look at the arm strength to get that ball downfield. That's a tremendous play by Jordan Jefferson and a big reason why I think he's the quarterback for this team going forward when he can extend plays and make plays downfield good things happen for the LSU Tigers. There's Landry number 80 mostly a special teams player but this is a 21 yard reception put LSU in good shape to start the fourth quarter. That's the thing about this team it is so deep. They got a lot of players at the skill positions uh, on offense and defense but you know the one question coming into this game we led with it was the quarterback and now that uh, and granted this is Western Kentucky and Jordan Jefferson has looked good tonight he's going to need to put another good uh, couple of weeks together you know they still have uh, to play Arkansas uh, at the end of the year you know next week they go to Ole Miss but uh, you know I don't think I can recall a national championship team ever making a quarterback change in the middle of the year. And I, I can't remember a national championship team ever having two quarterbacks. I mean, 2006, Chris Leak, and then you mixed in, sprinkled in a little bit of Tim Tebow, but that wasn't uh, a heavy diet. So the LSU Tigers are trying to do something this year that I don't remember ever being done before, at least in the modern era. We'll see if they can do it. Les Miles said we'd probably see Jared Lee tonight, but we haven't yet. 
LSU first down and 10 to start the fourth quarter at the 17 of Western Kentucky. Jefferson wants to throw, looking for Randall in the end zone. Knocked down at the last moment by Robinson. So second down coming up. And you almost you almost get the sense that with the way that they've been calling plays tonight in aggressive fashion throwing the ball down the field especially to Reuben Randall that they wanted to make a statement they wanted to, to set this game up uh, to, to have an explosion offensively throwing the football normally in this situation if they're playing an SEC team first and 10 at the 18 they're going to run the ball pound it with their running game but uh, I think they're trying to open things up a little bit get confidence in their passing. You know, back to blue. The lower his shoulder, break a tackle and get close to the first down. And he is fun to watch. Duvall finally got him down and is credited with the tackle, but a gain of nine. He's like a battering ram going in there. I mean, he's going to bounce off two or three linebackers here, and good blocking up front. First guy doesn't normally bring these LSU tailbacks down, and that's a good that's a good thing to have. I mean, 102 yards on just five carries tonight for Blue. He'll get it again. First down, and he flips inside the five. Blue, tumble. So first down and goal to go for LSU. LSU in the red zone this year. 26 consecutive scores coming into the game, leading the SEC, second in the nation in red zone conversions. They get inside here and they don't mess up very often. Under 14 minutes to go. And they go back to blue on the pitch. Did he get it in? You bet. Touchdown, Tigers. They have scored in every quarter tonight. And things are looking good now for the Tigers here in Baton Rouge on homecoming. They just have worn down this Western Kentucky defense continually running that football and had to break at some point. And Drew Alamo checks on the uh, extra point. Alfred Blue with his first career two touchdown game. And the Tigers now lead it 35 to 9 here in Baton Rouge. Anish Shroff here with your AT&T All-America Player of the Week nominee. George's Aaron Murray, 14 of 18, 224 yards, four touchdown passes in a 45-7 win against Auburn. Murray broke Matthew Stafford's school record for touchdown passes in a season. And Georgia can now win the SEC East with a victory against Kentucky next week. Text vote to 55862 for a chance at a trip to the national championship. All right, Anish, thank you very much. It's 35-9 here, 13-52 to go. Now, if it is Georgia, Brian, that wins the SEC East and LSU presumably goes on to represent the West, how does that matchup look for these Tigers? Well, I mean, Aaron Murray, as you saw, four touchdowns. He is gaining confidence. Georgia's defensively, they are good. I mean, they're a top-10 defense in the country, so... Uh, I don't think that they are the level of the LSU Tigers, uh, but I think they'll give them a good game. This game tonight with Western Kentucky was 14 to 7 at the half, but now LSU has opened it up. Antonio Andrews, just a short return on a short kick. And they'll have it at about the 27 yard line. There's Les Miles. This is how the schedule looks upcoming for the LSU Tigers. Two regular season games remain at Ole Miss next week and then host number seven Arkansas. That's yep. obviously the toughest test and before then the they, SEC title game. Yeah, before presumably. they get to the SEC championship, they got to worry about the Razorbacks. Last year, Arkansas beat them 31-23 and uh, they showed, they proved that they can move the ball through the air. The best offense, undoubtedly, in the SEC. And with Tyler Wilson, you have to expect that uh, that they're going to score points. And this is last year. They threw for 320 yards. Now, that was with Ryan Mallett. But Tyler Wilson has shown that 
He's got plenty of arm and talent. And Greg Childs, Jarius Wright, Joe Adams, those guys are going to make plays. And so the question then becomes the offense for LSU. Can they score enough points to keep up with Arkansas? Either way, I think it's going to be a great game. and No question. Certainly not a game that, uh, that LSU can take lightly. And you know what's in the back of the Tigers' minds that the Razorbacks have beaten them three of the last four meetings. This is Rainey to the near sideline. He'll pick up three. The two losses last year for LSU were to Auburn and Arkansas. And this is what it looked like in that game. 31 points for that offense for the Razorbacks. 464 total yeah. offense. And that yards per reception just shows you the big play potential of the Arkansas offense with those three outstanding wide receivers. The only difference, no Nile Davis, but this that's an offense that's going to be very hard to contain. And you got to you got to think who on the LSU defense, Simon and and Ron Brooks, their third and fourth corners are going to be the ones that are going to have to cover those guys in man-to-man -man coverage. Don't worry about Tyron Matthew and Mo Claiborne. They're going to they're going to have their guys, but the third and fourth wide receivers are going to be the ones that take advantage of, of the third and fourth defensive backs for LSU. I'm third down. Matthew knocks it down and Western Kentucky will have to punt. He's just got an uncanny ability when he comes off the edge when he doesn't is not able to get there. He gets his hands up better than anybody I've seen in college football kind of reminds me of a guy I play with in the National Football League and Rondé Barber who was so good off the edge he could read blocking schemes and he could get to the quarterback but when he didn't get there he could always get his hands up and get his hands on the football. Is he big enough to play in the NFL in, in the secondary. It'd be tough for him to play at the corner position strictly. Uh, you know two guys come to mind when I think about it. One is Antoine Winfield at Minnesota, the, the corner who's very physical. And then Rondé is the other one. But uh, Tyron Matthew, do not count him out because he's just feisty. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by Five Hour Energy. The no way, no hassle way to a great morning. Visit fivehourenergy.com. And in part by Travelers. Insurance for auto, home, and business. Here's our game track brought to you by Timberland. 35-9 LSU with 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Great game for Jordan Jefferson in his first start of the season. 168 passing yards and a touchdown. Alfred Blue, a couple of touchdown runs, the most runs by an LSU running back this season. But now Jared Lee is in the game at quarterback. And he got a warm reception from the faithfuls that are still here at Tiger Stadium. It's good to see after a tough game last week. Nice to see them give him a, a, a hand as he came in. He's going to throw on first down. Incomplete penalty marker down. That was intended for Jarvis Landry. Holding number 88 offense. Half the distance to the goal. Replay first down. So I'm uh, Chase Claymaw, the tight end. Now, last week played just 11 snaps against Alabama through two straight interceptions. Uh, they need to get him back to the way he played the first eight weeks because he was pretty good. They're going to need his confidence down the stretch because he's got a pretty good arm. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't necessarily agree that they're going to need him down the stretch. That's just my opinion. All right. But uh, you know, he played. Uh, outstanding the beginning part of the year had 13 touchdowns and one interception and then last week was just a nightmare. Good run for Michael Ford. And so that yardage back again at 13. But Alabama makes a lot of guys look bad and, and certainly he made some bad but these two interceptions were bad decisions and the most disheartening thing about these two throws was it showed that he got rattled a little bit and and that's not a good thing as a quarterback in the SEC and they need him to settle down hit the reset button uh, and find some more rhythm in case something happens to Jordan Jefferson. Michael Ford great effort. The 32 yard line. That's tough when you throw two interceptions in the game of the century 
and you don't have a chance to go back out and, and redeem yourself. And, you know, if you play quarterback long enough, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have bad throws. You just hope that you have a chance to go back out and redeem yourself. And so right now, this is an important drive for Jared Lee. He's had a roller coaster career here at LSU. As they go back to Ford, cuts back, and he's going to be close to a first down. Remember his redshirt freshman year when he was the starter in 2008. He went four and four that year through some bad interceptions and 16 of them. Yeah, and he was relegated to the bench until this year. Yeah, he had one start the next two years, and then all of a sudden, you know, Jordan Jefferson is supposed to start this year, and and then they have the off the field incident, and now. Jerry Lee, you got to take over, and he stepped up, and he manned up, and he played well. So give him credit, a lot of credit for where LSU is right now. Hey, he runs the option here, <laughs> almost like Jordan Jefferson does, and looked pretty good on it. It's a first down, a gain of nine. A little roll reversal here. Not known for being fleet of foot, but read it well. Took the hit, pitched it. That will try to get a little <laughs> tough time getting up. <laughs> Just take a seat. The relationship between Lee and Jefferson has been interesting this week, too. We talked to the coaches about it. Those guys get along pretty good. Very much cheer each other on. Lee looks left, comes back right, deep ball. Odell Beckham, the intended receiver, and knocked down. Great coverage by Robbins in the corner. That ball was underthrown a bit. Well, Beckham's got good speed, and you're right. That, if this ball is further down the field and outside, he may have a touchdown, but that's better coverage by Tyree Robinson. Just credit him with a, with a good defensive play. You know, the thing I thought was interesting that Les Miles said this week was that the one good thing, neither one of these quarterbacks is solely responsible for where LSU is right now. And so I think they'll have that humble attitude of how can I help the team? It's about the team first, and uh, I thought that was interesting. Lee steps up. He's got the first down. And gets to the 35, a gain of 15. Allison. Guys, while we did talk to the coaches and they commended both Lee and Jefferson for how mature they've been with the situation, I will say watching them on the sidelines, I did not see a lot of interaction or a lot of conversation between the two guys. We know, of course, they are such big competitors, but not a whole lot of conversation between the two tonight. What do you make of that? Well, it's, it's a tough situation because Jarrett Lee, he wanted to, to be the guy all year, and last week it, it was tough. And this is a Corvette. Make no mistake. This is a Corvette, this LSU team. And one of those two guys was going to get the keys to the Corvette. And right now, it looks like everything's swinging in Jordan Jefferson's favor. And so that's not easy for Jarrett Lee to accept. But uh, he's a team player. And I think that he'll do the right things and say the right things the remainder of the year. LSU had only three turnovers all year before those two picks he threw in Tuscaloosa last week. That, that still amazes me how great they have been protecting the football. Blue on second down at five and close to another first down. Alfred Blue with the most yards on LSU running back this season. He's up to 119 now and this is a season high for rushing yards for LSU tonight, 261 on the ground for the Tigers. They've completely changed their rhythm here and their play calling. They're going no huddle, hurry up. They're looking to the sideline. They run the option. Completely different. Michael Ford. He's got the first down and he's down to the 20. It's almost like the LSU coaching staff coming in this game wanted to get Jordan Jefferson more experience with what Jarrett Lee was doing, throwing the ball, and now they want to get Jarrett Lee more experience doing the things that Jordan Jefferson did, the zone read and the option. It's kind of flip-flop. sure there's a method to it. Like you said before, I mean, Les, Les Miles is very calculated in everything he does. thrown 
to James Wright, but Wright wasn't even aware that it was coming his way. Incomplete. Yeah, just a miscommunication there. Sometimes you have a little pop pass off of that zone read and just not on the same page. You'll see him at the, the left side of your screen. And Jer Lee reads it, but Jarius Wright doesn't. It's hard to hard to tell who's at fault there, but not on the same page. So second and ten. Lee on the field tonight for the first time. Did not start for the first time this season. Out of the gun. That is complete. And it is Travis Dixon with the catch. This will be very close to a first down. Bring up third down and less than a yard. This would be a good for the confidence of Jared Lee if he can finish this drive. Nice move by Ford. He's got the first down. Down to the six. Boy, it looked like Ford was going to be hitting the backfield, and he turned it into a four-yard play and a first down for the Tigers. Looked like the safety, Keontae Young. You're going to see him come off the edge right here. And watch this move by Michael Ford. This is just innate ability to spin like that and get out of that tackle. Between Alfred Blue and Michael Ford, you know, and Spencer Ware, the hammer, I mean, this backfield for LSU is special. And Kenny Hilliard, too. He's got a couple of touchdowns tonight. He lines up in the backfield at tailback, and he'll get it here. Hilliard to the five-yard line. Adebayo Hilliard makes the stop. The right side. Got to think that Willie Taggart is over there saying, you know, after I lose Bobby Rainey, my my 4,000 yard rusher. I'll just take, you know, the fifth or sixth back that you got over there. At LSU. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, Tagger wasn't a bad player back in his day. No. Uh, he's seeing all of his uh, records, though, go by the wayside now that Bobby Rainey is here. You know, I think if if it, records are made to be broken, and I think probably Willie Tagger would tell you if somebody's going to break his records, he'd want it to be Bobby Rainey. Terrence McGee in the game now. There's a pass to Katrin Boone for a touchdown. And Jared Lee gets the Tigers in the end zone. 14th touchdown pass of the year for Jared Lee. And that's got to feel good after a disappointing week last week in Tuscaloosa. That feels better than good to get the, the, bear, head, the bear hug from the teammates and coaching staff uh, that's that's a big throw by Jarrett Lee I know it looks simple and it's against Western Kentucky but trust me I've been in those situations and there's nothing that will take away the the sting of a poor performance than to come out and, uh, and do something positive for your team Jarrett Lee was down in the dumps this week that's going to help and it's now 42 to 9. Nevada's only loss a year ago was to Hawaii. Tonight, the Wolfpack out for revenge against the Warriors, Hawaii, and Nevada from Reno. Coming up next on ESPNU. All right, Anish, looking forward to it. It was 5.45 to go here in Baton Rouge. Well, it was a tight game for a while, but now Les Miles and LSU has... A very comfortable 42 to 9 lead since that safety three drives three touchdowns for the Tigers that uh, straighten things out and it's going to be lopsided as it was predicted to be but boy you got to tip your hat to Western Kentucky's effort here tonight trailed by just seven at the half Tyree Robinson from the 12 yard line. And taken down short of a 35. College basketball is back. And Monday night ESPNU delivers three games for you. Manhattan and number five Syracuse, Detroit and Notre Dame, Fresno State and Stanford set to come your way. It's Monday night here on ESPNU. Jared Lee capping that drive. 14 plays, 82 yards and 6.15. Didn't get the start tonight. 
Wes Miles wanted to get his confidence back up. That certainly should help. With five and a half to go. K1 Jakes hands off to Bobby Rainey. As we go down to Allison. Clay, you'll remember last week going into that Alabama game, LSU's message from Les Miles was to bring the wood, and they certainly did that, beating Alabama. He wanted them to take the approach of a batter. He said everybody will get their chance to swing, but when you do, you have to be smart, you have to be poised, and you have to go in there and hit a home run. Well, they certainly did, and so he rewarded them after the game. Each one of the guys had in their locker room a miniature bat by the athletic trainer Jack Marucci's bat-making company. It said, I'm committed committed to bring the woods offense special teams defense all in what a neat keepsake guys and you know it was close in the first half but they've certainly brought the wood here in the second half Rainey's going to be close to a first down for Western Kentucky but it looks like uh, Les Miles is going to get his 100th career win tell you what happens with those bats in the locker room there's a, one of those bats in each one of those lockers and now whenever they have a break no meetings they're going to be playing you know, stick ball in the locker room with those bats, and pretty soon somebody's you know, gonna get hurt. Somebody's gonna get hurt, and then the bats are gonna go away. So, we used to have an old broomstick we'd use uh, in the locker room to hit tennis balls and things like that. So, now it's a that's a great uh, a great thing to bring your team together uh, with some kind of memento like that. We did that at Michigan. We had an ice pick. Lloyd Carr gave us an ice pick because we were climbing Mount Everest, and uh, our ice picks were our our, uh, the play clock momentum. is malfunctioning. The play clock will now be kept on the field by the back judge. So a foul up with the play clock. Ice picks? Are you kidding me? It was an ice pick, yeah, and you had to chip away, chip away, chip. You know, you hear a lot of coaches talk about pounding the rock, pounding the rock, you know, bringing the wood. All those, they're all the same message, just different ways of getting to it. And Les Miles is a smart guy. He realizes that there's lulls in the season. And this week was potentially a lull after a big win and he'll use different motivational tactics uh, and, and, and things to, to get the motivation out of his players and that uh, those bats were just one of them. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Hand a bunch of 18 and 22 year to 22 year olds ice picks. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing bad's going to happen. Hey, it worked. We didn't we didn't lose that year. So it there worked. You go. <clears throat> now they're uh, Keeping the play clock down on the field, a third and one now for Western Kentucky here. That looks a little bit like Stanford, doesn't it? The way they move guys around. Hand off to Rainey, and he's got the first down. So Ole Miss is on the docket next for LSU. They're going to be in Oxford. That's a team that we have seen a couple of times this year. It's in disarray. Of course, Houston Nutt has uh, announced that he will not be coming back. And uh, but uh, but Les Miles and LSU cannot take the Rebels lightly, well, especially on their turf. Yeah, I, well, unfortunately, I think that I think that Ole Miss is in complete disarray and that they can't compete with LSU. But yeah, I, I think they'll be ready to play. I think they'll go in and handle their business. And I think the the schedule the schedule really lines up well for LSU. They had so many difficult games early in the year. You know, to open up with Oregon. I thought it was interesting. We were talking to John Chavis uh, this week, and he said that opening up with Oregon made them ready right at the beginning of the year. And they feel like they've ridden that momentum throughout the season. And now to have this game as a breather after Alabama and Ole Miss before you play a big game against Arkansas, the schedule couldn't have lined up any better for LSU. Flag down and. Mark Curls is going to make the call here. Legal motion. Offense. A player from the line of scrimmage went in motion. He never got in the backfield and set himself as a back. Five yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. Willie Taggart said that the goals tonight were modest ones against the number one team in the land. Compete and get at least two first downs every series. Well, they haven't done that every series, but they've done it more than not. And get a defensive touchdown well they didn't get a defensive touchdown but they did get a safety and that's why this game was close for a lot of the night tonight he can be very proud of the way that his team has played they did not the stage was not too big for them guys didn't have big eyes coming into this environment and uh, they still have a lot to play for in this season and this season has been a big success for them turnaround really 
Bobby Rainey gets loose. Stiff arm. And he gets into LSU territory. LSU crowd that's still here wanting a face mask, but no flag. Therald Simon run him out of bounds, a gain of 13. But Western is 5-1 and one in the Sun Belt and right in the thick of the race there and they still got two big games left against North Texas and Troy their only loss coming against Arkansas State now they need a little help from Arkansas State but uh, for this team Western Kentucky that was so bad for so long to be in the hunt in the Sun Belt you got to give a lot of credit to Willie Taggart. Actually, going to give a, a personal foul on LSU. It's Therald Simon. And so Western Kentucky is going to have great field position now with three minutes to go. And they're spotted at the 33-yard uh, line. Here's the penalty on Simon. That yeah, was a late push there. Real late. Sean Simpson lines up as the tailback. That's who they go to. 240 to play. Yeah, Western Kentucky, despite losing here tonight, in second place in the Sun Belt Conference, Arkansas State beat Louisiana Lafayette tonight. And like you said, they got a couple of chances to become bowl eligible. Willie Taggart is a very personable young coach very young just uh, 36 years old you can see how he's going to win a lot of recruiting battles because he's very likable in fact he's uh, had the best recruiting class in the Sun Belt the last two years rainy hit stays on his feet and finally Matthew gets to him <laughs> A loss of 17 as the Honey Badger what, what gets effort, to him. What effort by Bobby Rainey here. This was a design pass. He wanted to throw the ball back, but there's nobody there, and he breaks four tackles here. <laughs> and Bobby Rainey will be one tired man after this game. He has been all over this field, and he is a one-man show for the Hilltoppers, and you got to love the effort that he's shown him. And frankly, Willie Taggart continuing to play his best player down 42 to 9 uh, in this game with, with two big games coming up in his conference. Despite what Willie's mom recommended. <laughs> There's Andrews on the screen. And he's out at the 36. Matthew again in on the play. With a minute and 47 to go. Alfred Blue was very good tonight. He is listed as the number three running back for LSU but any one of those guys is a starter just about anywhere in the country he's a Wrangler five star player of the game 121 on the ground that's a season high for LSU running backs and two touchdowns we've said it several times how deep they are at that position and how young three sophomores and a true freshman yep and if Alfred Blue and Michael Ford keep playing like they did tonight. They may not make it to their fourth year. Jakes incomplete. Rico Brown, the intended receiver. First down. And LSU takes over on downs. 42 to 9. LSU, the number one team in the country, is going to go to 10 and 0 for the first time since 1958. Already underway in Reno, Nevada, and Hawaii. The Wolfpack 3-0 in the WAC. We'll get you to this game when LSU and Western Kentucky goes final. But for now, back to Clay Matvick in Baton Rouge. Terrence McGee Terry up the middle. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Action continuing Sunday with a doubleheader from the Ticket City Classic. First to two, their seventh ranked Vanderbilt Commodores taking on Cleveland State. And the number one team, North Carolina, taking on UNC Asheville at four. That's Sunday on ESPNU. Well, this was a 14 to 7 game at the half. LSU was on alert, and then they uh, woke up. 
four touchdowns on five drives in the second half. Jarrett Lee did not start tonight. He's in the game now. And hands off to Jakari Gore. Redshirt freshman out of Miami getting some oh, late reps Gore. as we're under a minute to go. So uh, Jordan Jefferson, the starting quarterback from here on out, do you think? I think he definitely gets the start next week uh, in Oxford against Ole Miss. And, uh, you know, if barring any kind of performance like Jarrett Lee had at Alabama, yeah, I think he'll continue to, to keep the job. And if he can uh, continue to throw the ball like he did tonight and like he did this week in practice, uh, I think not only will he be the starting quarterback, but he'll run and throw the football well. 168 yards passing for Jefferson. As Terrence McGee gets the touch, and that's going to do it. As LSU goes to 10 and 0 for the first time since the 1958 national championship team started the year 11 and 0. And that's the 100th victory for uh, Les Miles as a head coach. Pretty impressive. Very happy Les Miles on homecoming night 42 to 9 the final up next Hawaii at Nevada This has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports for Allison Williams Brian Greasy and everyone here. I'm Clay Matvick so long from Baton Rouge, Louisiana